Detroit. Yo, man, that's wild as hell, dog. Uh, let me get a mic check on you, dog. Dog, she was almost, almost at a hundred. How many times niggas didn't kill Betty White, dog? Every year. And like, I'm every like, year. I'm like, nah, fuck that. that niggas is. Niggas is gassing and shit again. Nah, once TMZ and people reported, <sighs> when did you T- did? When did TMZ become like the solidified? For, like if they posted, who have they been wrong on? Because I remember they posted mm. something and then took it down. Was it Kobe? They posted Kobe, then took it down, and then didn't come back up until later after everybody. I think it might have been, Co- but because it was too much cloudy information in the beginning with Kobe. Yeah. Yo, man, that's wild, dog. Uh, damn, man. Like, I've just seen some, uh, i just seen like a, a random, like, dope ass Betty White fact. Like, uh, she said she couldn't do something with a black man on television. So she, like, hired him as a, it was something wild. I was like, who knew? She was, like, down for the people like that. Not that you would think otherwise, but, like, yeah. Like, when a nigga been around for 99 years, Essentially, a hundred years should be a hundred. Like what? In eighteen days? Yeah. Like when you've been around for a hundred years, like think about all the things you didn't see, dog. Couldn't even imagine. Like you, you lived through both the twenties. Yeah, the nineteen twenties <laughs> and the twenty twenty. Like that's crazy. You seen both of the the Spanish? You see? No, that was no. You was around right after that nineteen. 19- 18 Spanish flu, whatever. Well, how long did that shit last? Nigga, you didn't live, you lived through Jim Crow. <laughs> you lived through the, segregation. She was on the good side of both. So. I mean, <laughs> ain't like you endured a whole lot. I mean, <laughs> come on, man, let's get through the show. We can say these, uh, these good jokes. No, nah, this shit is wrong. <laughs> these man. good jokes. We're going to add this shit in. Well, we're going to leave this shit in. All right. This episode is being recorded out of Shop Talk Podcast Studio in Oak Park, Michigan. For more information, visit shoptalkpodcaststudio.com. Over West Side, everybody know everybody, right? I got nothing but love in my heart for West Side niggas. Nothing but love. Pink suits with hats to match. Big cracker dolls and Cadillacs. You looking for the fattest sacks. This is where it's at. Windows tinted. Seats for lyric line. Keep the hands on the burner. Cause niggas know that it's money on the Yo, what up, though? It's your man, Jay Johnson, a.k.a. the tinfoil hat titan, a.k.a. the conspiracy realist, a.k.a. the technology snob, Steve Jobs Jr. Don't text me with your green bubbles, a.k.a. I only debate my equals, everybody else I teach, also known as Juice, because all the hoes say, Jay, you ice, young Caesar, because you know you can't roam without me, mister, if you don't like me, fight me. I got kicked out of Noah's Ark because they couldn't find another animal just like me. A.K.A. the West Side T'Challa, the new leader of Wakanda. Don't debate me, debate your mama. I am the best there is, the best there was, and the best there ever will be. What up? What up, though? And it's your man, Dame. Three underscores, 313. The West Side Landlord, the pride of PA. High Chief, Dame, don't fuck around. The liquor store legend, the corner store conquistador, your mama's favorite Dame. And the David Ruffin of the Shop Talk Podcast. Because you know who the fuck they came to see. Not you, Otis. It's no better than these four letters. Thank God for Dame. And if you're speaking on Dame, you better say it nice. And if you don't put the boss in front, then bitch, you're not saying it right. Let's go. Yo, welcome back. Shop Talk Podcast. Uh, I think this episode 295. Yeah. 295, man. This will officially be... The first Shop Talk podcast of 2022, and even though this is the last one, one we're recording in 2021. Yeah, who knows when I put it. I might throw this shit up there early. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, who knows? Do whatever. <laughs> uh, yo, man. Man, got a lot, of, uh, a lot of feedback from last week's episode. I did, too. Uh, I did, too. I appreciate people reaching out because now I'm, I know that you were listening, but like, I'm not. I'll be the first to admit we left a lot of like big songs on the floor. Of course, but I mean it's it's hard to get every single one when you got four other people in the room giving opinions of the music that they love. I don't know if I mentioned this. This was on tape or off tape, but I was like, I didn't go for certain records because like I just know they're gonna be there. So I would you 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 don't try to go for obscure, but you gotta you try to go for things that's not the ones that come directly to mind. Facts. Facts. 
and all of us is kind of these weird type of thinkers like that and we all did that and it was just like shit like how'd you lead off insert such no such. fabulous yeah, right. Fab whole catalog is them type of songs. <laughs> we was literally talking about like all the songs that he can do with Fab, Little Mo, and all this stuff. And like we, no one. <laughs> Not a damn fabulous song on there. We just assumed that somebody else was going to use that one. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You don't want to go with the easy ones. Everybody want to have them. Oh, shit, I ain't thinking that. So everybody pulled the, oh, I ain't thinking that. And it was a whole bag of. Yeah, man. Yeah. Man, that shit was fun. Though. It was fun. We Shout can out. tell the exact moment you got drunk. <laughs> Shout out to niggas pointing out the exact moment where I was. And man, there. I love y'all niggas, man. <laughs> That's some funny shit, dog. That, Didn't we have Jameson in here along with wine? Yeah. Yep. Okay. That'll do it. And tequila. Yep. That'll do it. Uh, but I don't think, I think everybody was just drinking a Jameson. Well, no, it was two bottles no, y'all of y'all polished off the wine. I didn't drink none of the wine, so they, they I think Verge and Cheyenne was kind of going back and forth yeah. with the wine. Um, yo, man, it was a, a dope episode, man. I love those type of episodes where we just get to chill and you know relax. And you know, I love that how we rap. This is what we do as a family every yeah. time. We got <laughs> that shit is crazy. <laughs> you know, that is our we are family moment. We rap that every time we're together. That's kind of wow. How and the that, performance is flawless. I'm, I'm, I'm at, so I recorded like the first hour and a half of the pod last week, but then I stopped recording because like I can't put it on YouTube with all those songs. Yeah. Like you getting striked immediately. Absolutely. Uh, but Universal music, Def Jam music. Now that uh, a new revelation has uh, uncovered, <laughs> uh, we might be seeing us. Uh, Somewhere else real soon. Real soon. You know real what I'm soon. saying? So, you get a haircut today? Uh, I shaved today. Oh, okay. It just looked like rather rather fresh yeah i shaved a couple hours ago actually and uh shout out to um i seen supreme products you know what i'm saying got that fresh shiny on there I but really it. the bevel products was the first and then the the, the facial moisturizer and all that shit you know bevel get me together that's 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 what's up i mean you got your you got a whole like self-care routine yeah 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 okay and then you know what i'm saying you got to go into the new year looking sharp you know what i'm saying new gotta, year new women New year, new life, man. Okay. New everything, dog. You know, I, I saw a, a clip from Breaking the Machine, another amazing podcast that records out of here, two young brothers from Flint, and uh, they had Denied on. Spank from here, though. Oh, I didn't know, I didn't know that. I thought he was, I thought Spank, I thought they both were from Flint. Mm -mm. Well, shout out to Spank. Uh, but they had Denied on there, and he was talking about, I'm, I'm not chasing the bag, I'm manifesting it. 2022, like the money is going to find me. It's gonna find us. I'm just yeah. I'm just putting it out there. It's gonna find us and it's gonna be the big bag. Yeah, man. I um was looking at some uh, some numbers and some stats yesterday uh on Spotify. And uh, of course we like we grow, you know, each and every year. But I was looking at some numbers uh from our show, looking at numbers from this week in culture. And it was like, you know you don't think anything is like impossible or no shit like that. But like, I didn't literally set my mind out to say, yo, this is going to be the number that we get per month, per stream yeah, or yeah, something I like that. You. But then seeing where we hit and without that being the actual key focus, it's like, all right. So in 2020, when we, when I actually set my mind to do something very specific, 2022, yeah, 2020 T O O. Okay. <laughs> uh, Somebody was like, yo, 2022 sound too much like 2020 also. Yeah. 2020 was. <laughs> yeah. But uh, so, yeah, man, I'm, I'm just got a very, I, I was forced into a renewed focus. You know what I'm saying? Just a renewed focus on on self. and, and I just feel like the business is going to do a 180 come the new year. And that bag is going to be, that's going to be the house of size, going to be the Birkin. It's gonna be the tail fair. It's gonna be the big, big bag. Yeah, it's gonna be the. You had to talk to me. The W you, by Judy. Yeah, I mean by Crystal. By White. Crystal White. You gonna have to talk to me with your inside voice after I sign that check. No, you talk to me with your 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 bank account. <laughs> um, but in any event, dog. Uh, how how was your week, my brother? Man, I'll be honest. Like I got I got I had a scare this week. I thought I had the vid. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like a lot of niggas got the vid. They do. They do. Like, I know a lot of people that didn't come down with COVID just Likewise. in the past week. <laughs> Don't and I say, say that, that shit. Hey, hey, I, oh, 
What fucking man said so? Now, I did have a little cough and cold this week. Before a second, I'm gonna I thought... Be, it, I'm going to be talking like this. <laughs> no, nah, don't do me this. like that. Uh, before a second, I thought I had the vid. So I got tested on Tuesday because, like, Christmas Day, I started coming down with, like... Mm. Body was sore. You know, it felt like that cold was coming on. But, like, nowadays, you just don't get a common cold. Yeah, it don't exist. Like, like you start with COVID first. And then if you don't have COVID, it's just like, all right, you're all right. Whatever you got is cool. So I started getting the body ache on Christmas. I was like, you know, let me see how this is going to play out. I'm going to take me a little mess. And I take my, you know, black seed oil, fish oil. Like, I take shit like that every day. Mm -hmm. It's just a vitamin regimen that I, you know, take a part of every day. So I was like, you know, I feel like my immune system, you know, strong like bull, but we'll see. (laughs) You know, Sunday, I was like moving a little slower. That cough was there, had some congestion. I was like, man, this, this, this might be it. Uh, Monday. Not it. Like, I mean, like it. Like, I just feel like if. I know I don't want to sound like ominous, but I feel like if I, if I get COVID, RIP. I don't that's, think so. That's, I don't think now, that's how it works. Now, this Omnicron look like it's in not just Omnicron, but being that I'm fully vaccinated. Say that shit like it's supposed to be Omarion. <laughs> the Omarion. <laughs> I was and, like, what the fuck are you talking? What the fuck is Omarion? Um- you know, <laughs> that's that's what they, that's the clinical term. Nigga, as soon as I seen that shit the first time, I said Omarion in my <laughs> brain. And I have not recognized nothing else besides Omarion. Now that the Omarion is out there, you know, and I'm fully vaccinated, even if I do get it, you know, it shouldn't kill me. Yo. It, sh- it might slow me down. <laughs> yeah but i shouldn't die yeah man nobody should die you know what i'm saying i don't i don't think nobody should die but i got tested on tuesday and you know like people was telling me like niggas places was charging like up to 165 for a test mm. and i'm like i want to be responsible but i don't, I don't not pay. 165 dollars i want to pay 165 dollars for a test but i just think that like um at this particular point in time um we should get test kits in the mail at least once a month by our good old government because they doing everything that they possibly can do to stop this like why wouldn't you just get test kits in the mail once a month because you i mean they're out there you can buy them and i mean i know people whose jobs have sent them tests yeah uh you know they got like a whole bunch of them that you just you know send like when i look at the number thankfully i didn't have it so you know I'm, i'm rocking with that when i look at the numbers and how rapidly this thing is moving. And then we send these babies back to school on Monday. But ain't a, well, let me rephrase this. But like the cases are up, but like don't they not dying like we did back in 2019. No, but that shit's spreading faster than the motherfucker. I don't know how to talk about this without trying without it sound like I'm downplaying it, which I'm really not, because I don't want this no, shit no, at I, all. I, I feel you. Uh, but like, nigga, the regular flu is spread like a motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? But niggas don't die from it like that. Yeah. Um, I, I think it's, I, I don't know, man. But like. Do you think we'll get to the point when we just treat it like a regular cold? Like, oh, man, you got COVID. You be all right. I mean, to an extent. Like, that's what we doing now. Like, a lot of people get COVID and a lot of people don't die. But then a lot of people, like, do still pass away. A lot of people die every day. <laughs> like I don't. Now you, you now I, I feel where you're coming from. Because like I look at the I looked at like so you know before it was like a two percent fatal right when it was first popping. My nigga, if you look at the numbers like from when it first started to like right now with like deaths and like you well it's it's under I'll just say it's under one percent. Like you got a fairly good chance of like. And when I say fairly, we talking about like 99. <laughs> like you got a really good chance. Now, that being said, I'm not trying to chance it. Yeah. I don't, don't want to be the one percent. I, I know, because I feel like I'm unlucky that's I'm you know what I'm saying. I'll be the like I feel like when I get on a roller coaster, this the one that the link break on. Oh, you know man. what I'm saying? I'm gonna get stuck upside down or you know what I'm saying? One of my big I'm not even gonna say You ever been shit. stuck on a roller coaster? I have not. I have. Nope. Can't do it. Had to climb down. Hell, fuck no. <laughs> Had to climb down. My Y'all, I, t- what? No, no. There's no fucking way, dog. Nigga, you. I never knew there was guardrails on the side of that bitch. Like, and you just inch down. Mm-mm. That's fucking wild. High as fuck. Wind gust you. T- it was probably about twenty five, almost thirty feet in the air. 
Now, I mean, it doesn't seem that bad. It, all things considered, all for things a roller considered, coaster, it's better than the Magnum. <laughs> like you're 500 feet in the air. Now, I mean, it's something like the Magnum or the what, what's the other one that go up? Without, Raptor. No, no, no. The one that go up and it don't it don't clink up. I mean, I ain't been to Cedar it just, Point since nineteen ninety. Man, Cedar Point got one, and it's like an elevator. The bitch just glide to the top. Nah, I'm straight. And that motherfucker go high as hell. I don't actually. I don't actually. I say actually a lot. By the I way, I do. Uh, I know. Um, I don't actually see the the fun in that. You don't ride roller coasters. I'm not. I'm not a roller coaster person. Nigga, I want to get there early, and I want to ride every last. Granted, one I haven't of them actually bitches. been to like Cedar Point since. Nine in the nineties, nigga. I'm, I'm not ever going back to Cedar Point. But since you're not ever. No, uh, but like I've been to like Six Flags since then. Uh, I like to get to the park early, and I want to ride Bush every Gardens, motherfucking ride. I think Bush Gardens is like in South Carolina, no one in the Carolinas or some shit. They got oh, rides. Yeah, it's like a a Cedar Point Six Flags okay. type shit. I never been in Bush Gardens. Yeah, uh, I can't tell you what. What state or where I was in, but I did that. But uh, that was on a wooden wire, and that shit was. Once I got That'd off of that rickety. bitch, like yo, this <laughs> what? <laughs> I need some steel, okay? Hey man, I like I love roller coasters. I love them shits, and I want to ride in the front car. I don't. I don't. I want to be in the front car. I like life. I don't want to be scared to death. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't get the the fun. In Nigga, that. I want to. I want to ride roller coasters until I'm a hundred. I Until do, I just can't do it no more. I do want to skydive, though, which is. I bought somebody a Groupon once for skydiving. That shit was like less like 100 bucks. It's just really <laughs> affordable to jump out of plane. It is. I mean, your first couple of times, you got a, another man is strapped to the back of you. Um, so I'm going to see if I can get a female instructor. Uh, I'm going to go out. <laughs> Might as well be strapped to another woman. Um, but I kind of want to do that. I mean, I don't, I'm not the biggest person. I'm not the. The biggest fan of heights. Right. Um, I wouldn't say I'm scared of heights because I do shit that's very high up sometimes. And like it is what it is when you're there. But like I'm not volunteering. That's a different type of experience, though. Yeah. Because they throwing you out of play. Yeah, that's interesting. <laughs> One of the homies went, you know, in Michigan here. And I'm like, yo, oh, man. I'm, I'm with it. What you, you probably got a better chance of surviving. We, we should we should do it and tape it. We should do it and tape it. I mean, I got a a, a, a GoPro strapped. I got the little head thing too. I'm with, I'm down. <laughs> I'm down. <laughs> Fucking wild. Come on, Jay. He was asking like, when when we gonna end this shit? <laughs> <laughs> <That's cool. laughs> That'll be the end. Like shit. Uh, what we gonna do on Saturdays now? Uh, <laughs> yeah. No more pie. <laughs> Well, the podcast gonna live on forever. You know what I'm saying? When well, I do that shit, I love roller coasters, man. I can't believe. Like you don't strike me as like being a little being afraid of some shit like that or no I wouldn't say afraid so or just not into it the the Cedar Point shit was different uh one of the uh, homies he passed away on the way to Cedar Point uh car crash oh man them shits uh um horrible car crash in my truck nigga fell asleep hit the meat like it was real bad okay and um so I was like yo we never going back until. The crew. If if I go with the, the 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 crew of people who was in the circle, we'll go together. Like, all right, cool. I'll make my return. I get it. I get it. Um, but since then, I've gone to uh, you know amusement parks, whatever. It it just ain't my thing. Like I've been on them because like, nigga, if some of them motherfuckers tell you you scared so many times, like, well, fuck it, I'll do it. Like, but like, just it just ain't a thing of mine. So I'll be there fucking up all the games and shit. You come off the roller coaster, you got the biggest damn teddy bear in the world. But, like, I don't... I don't. Yeah, and I'm the opposite. I don't, you miss me with the midway. I'm trying to stand in line. Yeah. And I'm and I'm eating bullshit all day. Oh, man. Love me a fucking um, elephant ear. I love elephant ears. What else is an elephant ear that we call it when it's not... Funnel cake. Funnel cake. Same shit. Yeah. Fucking elephant ear is amazing. There's though. a place over off Nine Mile that sell them all year round. Uh, I know a woman I used to was with. She loved freaking um, carnivals. 
like every carnival that she possibly can see she'll go to and i would i would love it too because i go get me some, some elephant ears and shit but i'm definitely not fucking with no carnival rides you can get you you can get the fuck out of here with that <laughs> <laughs> i feel like a nigga i know put that shit up mm. so i'm straight like, on carnival. i feel like this ride came out of a briefcase <laughs> <laughs> like uh i'm straight on that somebody ride. put it on the trailer put it back in their garage till till next summer i've literally seen two Oh, shit on local news where shit didn't go right. I'm straight. It's one right there by the crib. Um, technically, it's like in Livonia, right there on, uh, what's that, Seven Mile of so, Middleville? Yeah, they do, it, they do it in that parking lot every year. Uh, we, used to have, we used to have a carnival come through through the neighborhood. It was at a, what was the name of that damn school? On Westwood and like Paul or some shit. Uh, I forget the school, but like we would. You, go you ever been to the carnival by our old job, the Saint Anne Sausage Fest? <laughs> yeah, pause. Yeah, that was I, the name of the carnival. <laughs> I remember driving down the street, driving down Mound, and seeing Sausage Fest. I'm like, get the fuck <laughs> out of here! I had to take my. Off. I had, I did the little. You know how you got to turn around on Mound because you had to see. I, it got, again. No, I had to take a picture. <laughs> I think I posted that shit on Instagram years ago. Yeah, man, but the Sausage Fest. <laughs> <laughs> you talking about a good time? <laughs> <laughs> Put that's your fucking, hands up. Put that's fucking up. crazy, dog. Nigga had a <laughs> nigga had a great time at this. <laughs> oh man, no man. But the thing about day festivals, everything is free except food. <laughs> well, I mean, it's called a, uh, like to play the because it's hosted by the church. Yeah, but the, the church ch- with a sausage fest, of but, course. But, but the church also got like a casino tent, like where you can play craps. And blackjack. I'm on it with the crap. Yeah, you know. The, yeah, it's a, look, listen, man, the Catholic Church know how to get their money. <laughs> Catholic Church know how to do a lot of shit. <laughs> I, I thought about uh, going down to the casino and standing at the crap table around midnight and shit and see, you know, see what I can make happen on the crap table. Okay. I ain't played craps at the casino since I've been to Vegas, but I ain't played craps in the city like in years. Do you uh <laughs> do you do any sports betting? You bet on any parlays? Uh Yes, and I mean, I've, I've made a few bets. Um, I've won more than I lost, but no real money. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I made maybe like 40 bucks or some shit like that. Oh. But like, I ain't really did nothing too spectacular. Okay. But I, they be interesting, though. I mean, I throw some shit on there. Throw, you know, them wild parlays, put five cent, win 700,000. I throw <laughs> shit on there, but like, I ain't. I did it. All my bets, low key, been on like Pistons games and shit. Okay. Is K gonna give uh, a double double or some shit like that? Right. Like I lost on that one, but the Pistons was gonna win by like twelve or some shit, and I came up off that. Uh, now they talking about uh, gambling losses are now tax deductible in this state. Really? Yeah. That's gonna be a game changer right there. It's gonna make niggas gamble more. Fuck yeah, it is. <laughs> that's not. That's not good. I mean, nigga, if I can claim it on my taxes, it's not. Claim the loss on your taxes. It's not shit. bad either. Let me see if I can find this article. Well, not article. It was on one of them crime in the D, Michigan, Metro Detroit pages. Boy, I tell you, we got a whole bunch of pages other than the news to find out how fucked up the city is. Yeah. Like, um, so, I mean, people's cars have always been getting broken into and robbed and stolen. But, like, it's crazy right now. Or is it just that the rain camera is catching everything? I think that the camera is catching everything. And then there are certain cars that are just real popular with thieves that are also just popular in the city. Yeah, they just dropped the top 10 list of the ones that are being stolen. like SRTs, Hellcats. 2016 Malibu. Yeah. It's like they still in that. They still in the, they still in the uh, steering wheel. Steering so they can wheels, take. catalytic converters, uh some the entire car. <laughs> yeah. You seen that one joint? It was just basically they just showed the, the frame. car stripped and the the frame somewhere on the east side. I'm like, at this point, nigga, keep the frame too. I don't need it. That's for your insurance purposes. <laughs> you know, they say your serial number or your VIN number is like 30 different places in the vehicle. Right. It's not just like right there. No, no. It's, I, I've seen it on several different places. So uh, I, it's interesting that they have to match up every piece. Say, so, you know, when you're going through the assembly line, when you make the muffler assembly or whatever you do, like it got a, a serial number on it and it got to make it to the right car. Like if somebody don't do their job right. But they got that plan shit down to a science. They, yeah. they doing that shit right. 
That's it's just big is is big business, is big money. They they doing that shit right. Yeah. I never thought about that. I'm just like, yo, you get this piece, you get this piece, but no, this piece is specifically made for that car. Yeah. Um yeah, that's why my brother used to work at uh I think Warren, uh on my own and shit. Right. And um it was some car he somehow he looked under a car. I could be making this shit up, I, but I'm fairly sure I, I remember this. Like, no, I worked on this car. I put the because he put some. He used to do something with the brakes. He put the brakes in. Like, no, I worked on this car. I'm like, yeah, you know. <laughs> but I'm pretty sure you probably would know if it's a certain year car and we only make them. At and, I o- <laughs> and I only do this job on this type of car 300 times a day. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. I, I, I he probably you know he probably fucking see your little. Okay, sign or some shit. Yeah, I used to know nigga painted the cars in there and shit. So when your car get rusty at the top, the nigga said I was drunk. <laughs> hey, recalls happen when niggas be in that bitch. You know. I mean, I know people in the plant that posted on Instagram them drinking. Yeah. On the job, one hundred percent. Shout out to and like they do it every day. That's why your recalls. Happen. So I mean, <laughs> niggas is definitely getting bent on their brakes in the plant. Mm. That's a fact. The plant is like a, a really good job in Michigan. Either you work for the plant, I don't know, you, maybe you work for... It's a lot of industry. It's a lot of jobs in Michigan that... um. A lot of niggas work for Quicken in the plant. Uh-huh. Or or some call center. Or AT&T or, or fucking... Um, yeah, so internal yeah. work. But it's a whole bunch of industries that keep everybody paid that everybody fucking hate, but... That Everybody was, worked there. That what employs the entire fucking metro area. I won't even say the city. Yeah. Um, that metro fucking area. Uh, any event, man. Um, we coming up on the end of twenty uh twenty one. It's time everybody be trying to do all the reflection shit. Uh, I'm not really trying to reflect, but uh, I wanted some, to do a different list. Yeah, let's go. Things that you did not want people taking into twenty twenty two. And I don't want them taken into. No, two? I want you to leave it right here in 2021. Um, Never speak on it again. <laughs> Man, go first. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's going to be controversial, but I'm I'm just going to say it anyway. Like, look, if you're over the age of like 33, 34, and you're a young lady, like the the idea of a nigga like taking care of you and you not paying all no bills, I need you to leave that shit right here in 2021. Because you're too old. Mm. You are a 97, 600 bins, 278,000 miles, flood damage. <laughs> I'm your seventh and owner. 33? I'm your seventh owner. <laughs> your Carfax look like a college transcript. Like it's, it's, it's probably a little bit over for you. You probably got a little baggage on you. You're not thin no more. You know, you're not curvy. You you curvy, but you also got like a little muffin with it. <laughs> and they making them younger and finer with less baggage every year. They coming out of college 21, 22, head full of their own hair. <laughs> you know. Not at 21, 22. <laughs> Maybe not. Not no more. Bright eyed, bushy tail, no baggage. She just want to have fun. She finer than a motherfucker. You the old bitch in the club. You auntie now. And auntie, you got to work because you <laughs> mismanaged the best years of your pussy. Mm. I mean, I'm I'm sorry to be the one to break it to you, but you mismanaged the best years of your pussy. You might have two kids by two different niggas. Like, why, 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 why do I want to take care of you and them, you know, rabbit ass babies? It's done with. And I just want you to leave that ideology behind in 2021. It's okay. But you're going to have to work for the rest of your life. You're not going to get a baller, a nigga out, out the NBA, you know, a nigga that used to to rap or sing. It's, yeah. it's just find a regular nigga that work at the plant. He work at Quicken. You know, he, he a store manager at T-Mobile. Y'all combine them $60,000 salaries apiece and just live a regular life where you pay 45% of the bills and move on. I mean... Two sixty thousand dollar incomes together in a household and in, in this metro area. That's, that's a good a, living. That's a good living. Y'all get you like a two hundred thousand dollar house, two two nice cars, and just live. But don't expect him to take care of you. Uh, on the on the other side of that, uh, 
I want to say young man, but not so young man. Okay, come on. Um, the hairline is receding. Leave it. The dad bod is in full effect. Oh man, embrace it. Um, you ain't the you this you are far removed from high school. You not the you peaked in high school in real life. You was not about to get the drop dead gorgeous fully packed out in every direction woman like you not about to get the 22 year old coming fresh out of high school nope. i mean fresh out of uh a college because like why she wants you <laughs> um, you don't even make enough money yeah and if you do she only there for it so like the the idea or the beauty standard that you wishing for you probably not gonna get it you should leave that shit alone too because you need to go get you a regular woman. My man, you mismanaged her back in college. Like, you might have to she, get her. You, you could have had her back in college, but she was the man back then. And, you know, once I'm done once I'm done playing the field, you know, I, I get I get what I want. Nah. You might have to take a single mom. And she she might have a couple stretch marks. That's just what, that's the game that you in now. But I bet you she'll take care of you. And uh, Find you a single mother that love you, my nigga. But in real life, the 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 what I want I want to see leave in twenty twenty one is just constant constant bickering back and forth about all these hypothetical situations between men and women. Like nigga, is that what you're dealing with right now? Then why the fuck you keep making posts about this shit every fucking day? All right, Jack. You want to have a fucking like I don't want to do that shit all the time. You know what I'm saying? Like every day, it's a. A two hundred dollar date. It's a this and this, or who gonna split this? Who gonna bring me my plate? Like, come on, man. Let's just <laughs> like that's never been a thing. It, it's it's an ongoing circle of that shit every year, and every it, year. And it's a hypothetical circle because I don't really. It's not. I don't think it's happening in real life. Like, how many times you been nigga, out? Do you even have two hundred dollars to spend on a date? Niggas is spending more than two hundred dollars on a date because nigga inflation. Facts. I go. I can go out by myself and spend a hundred dollars. So two hundred dollars is combined. It's not that I spent two hundred dollars just on her portion. Like, fam, you mean you can't spend a hundred bucks on her? Because yeah. you gonna eat and drink just as much she is. Look, I, I, I two hundred dollars. I mean, if you send somebody lunch money, like nigga, really? Nigga, you said what your combo is? Nigga, fourteen dollars. Nigga, you send somebody ten dollars for lunch. Nigga, that's the they gonna put a four for that's, four. That's pull. That is that's that ten dollars is putting it towards lunch. That is not paying for my lunch. That's just putting it towards my combo. Nigga, I go to Captain J's and get a twenty piece wing ding. That bitch is twenty dollars. Yeah, I'm about to say it's eighteen. <laughs> I get a ten piece combo. That bitch is twenty dollars, dog. It's like eighteen and some change. Like the twenty is gone. It yeah. might as well just be twenty dollars. Like shit ain't cheap. What's no the more. last thing that's just like, like a haircut? That might be the last of the like last the twenty dollar range of something. Haircuts, cost but even more that's going away. Yeah, <laughs> haircuts cost well more. My, maybe mine is about twenty because I'm just getting the beard done. Yeah, I pay twenty when I just go get my uh. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, my 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 beard and goatee and shit. That's it. You know what I'm saying? Every when I'm when it's time for me to cut it off, I, sometimes I cut it off myself. Via the time lapse Instagram video I posted months ago. And okay. Everybody was like, this is wildly entertaining. Um, but I go to the barbershop and I throw 20. I don't know how much it costs, but I figure this 20 should be enough. <laughs> yeah. Look, Tom get damn near $100 every time I go to the shop when I bring me and my sons. You know, so I don't know, man. I think I, I, I just wanted to leave this whole little bickering shit back and forth. I leave that shit. What's twenty dollar date? What's another one that you said? Uh, uh, who, who get who, who get bring they play the first? first and shit and splitting the bills and all other shit. Remember when we posted that video about them couples splitting bills? Like everybody was cool with that shit. Like that's just a black people thing. It's a new video that's floating around that went viral this week with a woman saying how um she give her whole check to her man and he take care of the bills. Yeah, yeah. I'll be honest. That's a uh, that's not dissimilar to how I grew up in my household. Um, my parents had like a house account and they put both their checks in a house account. They both paid themselves an allowance out of their checks, but the rest of the money went into the house account to pay for house grocery, like shit that the fam- house needs family shit. They paid themselves like, yo, this is the shit I'm gonna fuck off with. But everything else, like we parents first and our home comes first. So if I want to fuck off and buy a new shirt and jewelry or whatever the fuck it is, I'll do that shit out of my 
my personal allowance that I give myself, but everything else is going into the house account to take care of the house and take care of the family. Um, I used to watch my mom go grocery shopping. You know what I'm saying? We was younger. She would be like, yo, $60 a week. She'd go through, had her little calculator out, went up and down. And I'm like, boom, she taught me how to grocery shop. So when I grocery Facts. shop, I type in my shit. I know how much I want to spend. <laughs> I already got my list together and boom, boom, boom. And like she had it, she know exactly what it was when she got there. You know what I'm saying? Every week. She have her coupons together. 100%. I'm like, cool. Now, my mom actually did the finances and shit, but it was that same situation. So what's really the, the, the difference is when the man is quote unquote collecting the money and paying it for the woman and look like the man slavery taking up, you know what I'm saying? Pimping her. But like that, that scenario uh, it's not dissimilar to what I was raised on and I'm not mad. I mean, it worked for my family at the time. So that don't mean that's going to work for every single person right. or whatnot, but it gave me a base to, to kind of like to something I know how to do to, to I'll try it out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I feel you. Yeah. So, but I, this whole, why are we so adversarial? Like we, you know, you men, I know this may be a foreign concept, it's okay to like women, okay? Niggas don't like women. They like they like sex, but they don't like women. Man. They really don't like women. I heard a woman say, don't use my body as a tool to jack off with. That's pretty fair. You know what I'm saying? Like, do you want this woman? Are you literally just using her body to get off? As a sexual toy. And then you, and then you like, you maneuver through life. Yeah, you know this person has value other than that. And on the other end of that, it's like, women, it's okay to like men. You don't have to hate black men. I'll just say black men because that's what I'm, I'm talking to black women. And I, anyway, like I know it's cool to be on the internet talking all that shit, but then I know what really happened to y'all relationship. Like you don't even believe this shit because I know your nigga. <laughs> and this is he not. He was catering to him. He was bringing plates, rubbing feet, running bath water. We can leave that shit in 2020. We can leave that shit where the fuck is that? Had his right work now. clothes together and pressed for the next day. And it's nothing wrong with doing shit like that. It's nothing wrong with it. But don't get on the internet and act like you the you the exact opposite. Nigga, when I was with my wife, I'm gassing the car up on Sunday because I know she got to go to work on Monday with the kids. Yeah. Yes, I get up earlier than her so I can start the car because, nigga, she used to have to be to work at 6 o'clock. So, yeah, I'm up 530, so the car is warm so she can leave on time. Nigga, I pack her lunch some days. I mean, like, nigga, it's, it's a relationship. It's a give and take. Like, we don't have to act like that. No, we should really, like, we, we really need stop to be. Fr stop fronting. We need to be together, dog. Like, in real life. Like, men need to be with women or whatever. You're into. <laughs> yeah. But generally speaking, like, your fucking body was made to fit into that other person's body, fam. This this whole I'm gonna be by my that, no that shit ain't right. You need a person. You <laughs> you do. Even if, even if that's not like your mate, like I I I found out like this year like really getting sick and not having nobody like at the house with me. Like I need somebody I can trust enough to give a key to, or to let them know where important documents are just in case I don't wake up one day. Mm -hmm. Like everybody needs a person. Yeah, lead this. Uh... No man is an island. Leave this selfish shit alone in 2021, dog. We gotta, we gotta move forward on some. We gotta progress, cause that shit whack. We just all acting like we too cool to like each other. Like how old, how old are we? Like it's like a seventh grade dance. The boys on one side, the girls on one side. <laughs> shit is wild. So like y'all don't y'all don't be talking at lunch, <laughs> like this 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 how y'all get down. Somebody just need to break the ice. It's all right, yo. I'll extend the olive's branch. You know what I'm saying? Women, we love you. Like, <laughs> love me back. Shit. Yeah. I don't know. I was looking at, uh, you know how they was, I came to this point and I tweeted this shit the other day. You know how they say Kevin Samuels hate black women, right? I don't feel that way at all. I, I don't necessarily feel that way all the time. Sometimes we like, you know, nigga, you kind of, <laughs> sometimes he's, he just an asshole, right? But the whole Yo, he hate black women, blah, blah, blah. You know, I think hate black men, Crystal from the read. Uh, oh, yeah. I, yeah. It's it's not even funny. It's like they don't ride against her like they ride against Kevin Samuels. She specifically says, I hate black men, straight black men. Uh, 
And like, it's not fair. Who it's hurt not, you, baby? It's not right. So we got to hurt le- you. We got to leave all the hate out. I mean, if you're a nigga that get online and complain about black women every fucking day, you got to leave that shit alone. And vice help, versa. Get the help that you need. Really, no. Like in, in real life, it's cliche, but who hurt you? Because that's what it is. Somebody hurt you deep down in your past and you ain't unboxed that shit yet. And I tell you, as a nigga that's gone through therapy, still occasionally goes through therapy, you need to find that breaking point. I remember I had a therapist tell me once that I hated women. Mm. And I was like, nah, fuck you talk. Like, you don't know me. You don't know my life. But she has some validity towards the statement. And we had to unpack where that hurt came from initially. Mm. And once I found it and was able to talk about it and accept it, yeah. like the way I felt was different. Yeah. But I was holding on to some hate that I didn't even that I wasn't even aware of. I've been there. I'm treating women a certain <coughs> excuse me, a certain way because of one particular incident that happened to me mm-hmm. and reshaped how I looked at women. Been there. You know, this is kind of like our uh, you know, we had a conversation about closure and shit, right? Yeah. Like cuz that's what it is. Right. Like that that's literally what it is. Like until that thing you find out what it is, you be trying to and to, to kind of like get over it and then you kind of feel better and shit. I'm not saying that like you owe that, but like literally that is what it is. You find out that thing and once you be like, damn, I didn't even didn't fucking <laughs> realize that what was going on. Now everything it's like a weight lifted off your shoulders and shit, and you just be like, Oh, I can kinda like breathe now and shit and go yeah. back to normal. I had a I had a moment, you know what I'm saying? I didn't even know I needed a closure cuz like I ended the relationship, but I still needed closure. But like she was like, "Why are you so mad?" I'm like, "What?" That be it. That be it. Cuz like he would call me, ask me if I'm like, "Nigga, ask your daddy. I'm not your responsibility." Like, "Why are you so mean? Why are you so mad?" Like, "What you mean why I'm mad?" And then like, "This is why I'm mad." That would be And it, then we man. had a conversation and then that shit was it was gone. Look, man, when me and my ex-wife was going through our divorce. Number one, we had been separated for four years. Hadn't lived in the same house, you know. Had both moved on in our lives, and I was and I was mean as fuck for years to her. Yeah, and it was like, why am I like nigga? Why am I mean? Because she decided to move on with her life. Like that's all she doing is trying to move on and be a co-parent to me. Yeah, and then like one day, I just didn't feel anger towards her no more. Now are we best friends, no. But I I love her. I love her over there, but I love her. And I had to realize, like, nigga, you just hanging on to something, to an angst that, that, that's not even real. Did, did, did your ex-wife always have this sense of humor? No, nah, she got funny, like, after we got divorced. Because, <laughs> was... like, she real sn- like she real snarky now. She, she quick the, on her toes. She quick. <laughs> yeah. Because, like, we was, I was over there when we were doing the pictures for your son. For i like, yo, she got the cracks. Yeah. Like, she... Yeah, it's, it's, it's different. Nah, she wasn't like that when we lived together. <laughs> I'm like, yo, she went to the, the school of the office. She <laughs> right. had all the whole eyes cracks and shit. Uh, that's interesting. Nigga, you know where she was quiet. Yeah, I'm like, maybe I just, you know, you know people at work and not like outside of work. Hey, man, like, look, <laughs> when you with somebody and you so young, y'all ain't even done growing. You're not even really the person that you're going to end up being. And I always remember a marriage counselor was telling us like, you can't you can't just be in love for who they are now because mm-hmm. your partner is going to change up five, six, seven more times. I don't know. In the next decade, 20 years, they're not going to be the same person that they are right now. And if you just love just this version, you're going to be fucked up. Man, what's interesting? Uh, something happened today, earlier today. And, and it prompted my dad to like give an explanation to someone about marriage and, and going, you know, ups and downs and shit. And he was like, you know. But take it from me. It's not like I don't know what I'm, I, you know, like I don't know what I'm talking about. I, I'm like I wasn't married for 39 years. Um, death do us part. Good, or, better, or worse until death do a part. Until until death did do us part. Like 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 I don't know what I'm talking about for 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 39 fucking years and shit. And when you think about that, so my mom was 18, my dad was 19. Let's say y'all married 15 years. But I mean that's a long time, right? Mm-hmm. But in real life, you're only 35. You know what I'm saying? So, like, at, like, around 35, who you are at 35 ain't who you are at, at 19, 18, 19. Absolutely. And not. it's not going to be who you are at 45. Like, how many different versions of yourself 
to the point where now when you 55 now, like you for be married for 39 years, that's at least four different people. Yeah. Not, and that's at least that's only if you change every 10 years. And that's not that's not usually what happens. You know what I'm saying? So like, yeah, that 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 change is like uh, eternal. You got to be OK with that. You got to be OK with the change. So somebody told me love is what you do when you don't feel you know, the, that warm and fuzzy for the person. Yeah. That's what love really is. I, I was, was Mike Tyson quote when he was on Joe Rogan. He was like, uh, he said, discipline is doing something. Or he said either discipline or dedication. One of them was like, it's doing something that you hate doing it, that you, that you hate doing, but doing it like you love it. He said, that's what people be lacking. Like, I know this shit is fucked up. I don't want to run this mile today. But when you do something that you don't want to do, but you do it like you love it, like, that's the dedication. And so, to your point, it's like, yo, I may not be feeling real warm and fuzzy right now. Yeah. But I'm going to do it because what I what I, what I I talk and what I think I am and what I actually do are often two different things. And that, and that level of thinking is what makes people, like, great. Yeah. So just, I remember when I was younger, I got a I got a homeboy of mine. He run track. He went all the way through college, tried out for the Olympics, never made the U.S. team. But, you know, Nick was fast, like fast, fast as fuck, one as far the, as I'm concerned. One of the fastest people in the world. <laughs> yeah. So I remember in, in our community, we used to have this race every year where it was like there's a path or there's a park near my old house. And depending on how you run the path, it's like a mile. Yeah. And every year they'd have a race for who ran the mile the fastest. And he came in second that year. It was another like young dude in the park that, you know, came in first on the mile. And say like the the race is like the middle of like June. So, you know, they ran it. You know, it was it's like between specific age ranges. So say like they was like 17 to 14. Yeah. And my homeboy came in second and the other young nigga from the park you know, came in first. And I was like, damn, like, Hamad, one of the fastest niggas I know, and he lost. So the next day, he come up over my house. We just outside kicking in, you know, middle of the summertime. And we see the young dude that beat him. And he jogging. And he was like, hey, man, I just wanted to holler at you. You beat me. He, you know, just giving him a hard time. And he said, I'm going to beat you next year because I'm running right now. Mm. Y'all outside kicking it and I'm running. <laughs> <laughs> he said, good luck beating me next year. And the nigga kept on. And that's and, that's, that, and that be that same type of you gotta have like nigga, do do I wanna be here every Friday? Like you my homie, I love you. But like some Fridays I'd be like, man, man, I don't want labor, to. This a labor of love. But I know that this this is gonna be the difference between me and the money and somebody else trying to get to it. Man. Cause I'm gonna have my ten thousand hours plus. That's like uh Floyd, you know. Four o'clock, two, three o'clock in the morning after the club go close, we about to go out running. While they sleeping, I'm working. Yeah. While they working, I'm working. But no matter what, I'm always working. And you clearly you see where, you know what I'm saying. But that's what it it takes that it takes that almost insane type of focus. <coughs> excuse me, that almost insane type of focus in order to meet your goals. Yeah. Everybody who's, you know. Like goat level successful is willing to do something that you weren't willing to do, man. Not only did they put in the work, but like they put in the overtime without anybody acknowledging it, without it being the light shined on it. Yeah, it take you a long time to be an overnight success. It'll look like a nigga came out of nowhere, but like in real life, you don't. And it's a different level of mental toughness. You know what I'm saying? Like to to get up at four in the morning every morning run miles, work out, and then go to work, go to school. Like, that's a different level of mental fortitude. Yeah. And most people don't have that. Yeah. Yo, man, we got to leave quitting in 2021, man. Ain't no room for quitters, dog. It ain't no room. It's like, yo, niggas got to turn up more. When, when you think it's time for me to stop, let me turn up more. Because every, the moment you think you got it is when they're going to take it all you know, from I you. I always be afraid that, like, you hear people be like, Yo, if I'd have just kept pressing on just another another month or two, like that could have been your breakthrough. And that's what I always be afraid of. Like, yo, man, 
What if we end this at like episode 300 and then it'd be like, no, nah, man, if y'all would have stayed at it till episode 309. It'd be like, yo, I close the fucking studio down and then insert company come here. I'm like, man, I'm looking for studios to purchase to, to, to do this. Anybody know one? It's like, oh, nah, shit. They, uh, they used to be that shop talk place. <laughs> uh, in real life, man. That shit, man. <laughs> Any thoughts that y'all think I think I do. You know what I'm saying? I go through every fucking emotion uh, dealing with all this shit, man. Because, yeah. like, when you, when it just be he, us here alone, like, this, this shit is not always rewarding. You know, I, I look forward to, I, I'm, I'm very humbled when, like, people reach out and they offer their congratulations or just their kind words. But, like, when it's just me and Jay, like, the shit be... Like yo, it, it it the the reward isn't isn't always there. Like you just got to so push through. The, sometimes the reward isn't always physical. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. It's in a um, that's that's probably a better a better uh, description of it. The war the reward isn't physical. Um, currently, to the level where where it ultimately will be. You know what I'm saying. But hey. <sighs> The work got to get done. Yeah. I be thinking about that little meme all the time with a nigga underground uh, picking and shit. And it, it'd be like, just a little bit more. <laughs> yeah, He'd like, hit that diamond. Yeah. Like, yo, that shit be wild. Nigga, I look at that shit every day on my forearm. Shit say hard work. Dedication. That's, that's it. <laughs> that's it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, So this year, man, what's some things you thought was going to happen this year that didn't happen? That could be with the music. It could be in in life. It could be in anything. Unless Kendrick drops something in the next couple hours, man, I thought for sure we was gonna get a Kendrick album this year. I really did. I thought maybe today, cause it's a it's Friday, ain't it? <laughs> I'm like, yo, this is the last Friday of the year. Like, I thought for sure, fourth quarter. You couldn't have told me we weren't gonna we weren't gonna get a Kendrick album, man. and especially that Drake and Cole dropped this year. I'm like, dog, it's 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 coming. I, and he dropped a burst with Baby Keem. I'm like, dog. Two. Yeah, I'm like, Kendrick Shot is... two video. Kendrick is definitely giving us an album this year. This going to sound worse than what I mean. I think that Kendrick would have dropped if Drake and Cole projects were better. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Not that they were bad projects. But like they didn't push. They the, came and went. They ain't pushed the envelope as like, yo, is this the best work? Like I, I like Cole's album, but for me, I, I feel like it came and went. Like I, I liked it for a month or two, but like I don't think it had like some long retaining value. Drake album, I liked it. I don't have no problem. I I like Drake shit. But it it just came and went. It was the same Drake. I don't think on any of these particular albums that they pushed the envelope or something. You know it what I'm saying? Like I've been I've been re-listening to uh Dissect podcast, um, to Pimp a Butterfly, as well as Damn. Um, like I've said that shit countless times on this on this on this pod here, and I don't really just be bigging up other pods. But if you really into music and, and lyrics and dissecting shit. I I really want y'all to listen to this shit because break it down line by line, word by word. It's a different level of artistry that goes into being able to have something play um and you can hear it for what it is, but it have four and five different meanings and like each word ties back to a theme and you be like, "No, nah, nigga, you reaching." But no, let me pull this audio from this interview and then actually the person this song is actually sampled from is from his town and this and this. I'm like, "Yo, it 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 probably takes so fucking long if you're doing this level of detail. And that's what I mean. Like, I don't necessarily know that everybody pushes the album or pushes the envelope. Um, and he, you kind of heard him on the freestyles. Like, nigga, I'm the GOAT. <laughs> Burn that hard drive. Address me as four letters. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't I don't think that y'all are on my level. Um, not even in a disrespectful way. I just don't look at y'all like that. And um, how can you say that to somebody without it being disrespectful, though? That's not my intent. My intent isn't to embarrass you or to disrespect you. But I do. Th that's like Michael Jordan coming into a ring. I'll just use Michael Jordan because he's a known talent. He goes into the high school where Mr. Basketball is in the state of Michigan. Right. My nigga, you not fucking with me. 
Like, I'm not trying to embarrass you by that, but, like, we're not on the same level. Like, I'm all-time great. You may be all-time great on high school level in your state, and you are really, really good. You know, the just the amount of muscle memory that an NBA player has compared to even the best college player. Like, like them niggas literally play basketball. Like, yeah, you in college and you playing basketball during the season – and then in the off season, you playing with your homies. That's not equivalent to like an NBA shoot around like, or an NBA practice. I seen somebody upload some footage of Steve Francis saying like, "Yo, y'all niggas never gonna remember how cold Steve Francis was." And I had to think like, "Yo, Steve Francis was fucking cold. Like it had handle hops, shoot that bitch. Yeah, like every like super cold. It's levels to this shit. Now, in that two guard era." Kobe Bryant ultimately reigned supreme. He ultimately beat out all those guys because all those guys came up. T Mac. Yeah. And something one by one took them all down, whether it was injury or whatever. If something took personal demons. Yeah. Everything. Somebody took all those down. Fam, we're not on the same level. It's levels to this shit. And at the level that you're at, you are the king of that level, right? But I'm on a different level. And I don't mean that to, 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 to degrade you, to disparage you, to, to, to try to make you not be better but like i am on a different level every facet of life has a food chain corporate life the jungle your neighborhood every facet of life has a food chain and not everyone is an apex predator you know we're not all polar bears and lions like nigga it's got to be gazelles in order for the ecosystem to survive and just in some areas like nigga not everybody is going to be the king of the jungle not everybody's going to be the lion that's a fact and I mean, it is what it is. Shit. But I really thought Kendrick would give us some semblance of an album this year. Now, if I wake up tomorrow morning to a text from you like, "Hey, yo, it dropped," then <laughs> then you know we'll have a different conversation come next week. But I really thought Kendrick was going to give us an album this year. I really did too, dog. I was I was really uh, actually waiting for it, man. But what did you think was something that was going to happen this year but didn't happen? I was literally going to say Kendrick. Okay. That was literally the first thing. Um, I thought we would somewhat um, be back to normal with this COVID shit. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I guess for, for a second it kind of sent. It seemed like we was gonna be nigga. We was outside. Yeah. But uh, ultimately, niggas were starting to gather again. Yeah. Ultimately, it ain't really work out that way. So, uh, uh let me see. Um, man, I thought I kind of thought I was gonna see Earl Spence and um, uh, Bud Crawford fight this year, but Earl got into uh, he got into the car accident the year before, but then he detached retina and shit like that. I thought that was gonna happen. That's probably happen next year and shit. Maybe. Um, I'm fair. I mean, I'm fairly sure it'll happen next year. I mean, Spence about to pick up his third belt. Like, like he said, I'm doing all the heavy lifting. Like I got three, I'm about to get three belts. You got one. Uh, I got all the pay per view numbers. I got all the the metrics. Like I'm the A side. Like clearly in every measurable yeah. thing. Like I'm the A side. Um, if you want to take the sixty forty, we can fight. You know what I'm saying next year. That's a good deal. Um, but for some reason, uh, Crawford thinks he deserves fifty fifty with his 50,000 pay-per-view view, view buys on, uh, on, on no, no. ESPN. Like, I don't, no. I don't get it. But um, I figured that should have happened in, sometime in 2022. Um, uh, I don't know that I thought Versus was still going to be around like this. I didn't. And, like, that I'm not, like, tired of it yet. I am. Um, I'm not. I'm tired of it. Um, not too many more battles that I want to see. I mean, some of this shit still just be fun. like these are hit records, though. Like, who don't like hit records? You know what I'm saying? It's like a podcast we do. We throw a bunch of songs that niggas like, and niggas be happy. Like, I, I like Bone. I like Three Six Mafia. Like all these matchups. Like, I just feel like a lot of artists now are starting to feel like they bigger than a versus. Like, oh, I wouldn't do it because who? I'm, I think. I would like to see Future in the verses. I really think niggas would have a hard time getting Future up out the paint. 20 songs? I don't think 20, Future. Well, 
And if we talk about features, I really think niggas would have a hard time getting future about the paint. Who would you put him against? Because like in real life, if you put the future, you're gonna like the melody and you're gonna like the beat. But I don't know what the fuck he's saying. <laughs> you don't you don't like <laughs> Right. And like so most of his joints is gonna be like features. It's not gonna be like radio records. Cause like you know he do be on the radio from time to time. Like he don't got twenty radio. I got that good consent out of the hall. I got some down bitches I can go. Yeah, that's good enough for me. I know. <laughs> I think, but I think somebody with like actual, I don't want to say actual, because future been a thing for ten years. You know what I'm saying? Like yes. I thought he was gonna like come and go. He been here for ten years. He got enough street records and and all the every like it's enough. You know what I'm saying? But who would you put him against? I don't know. I think a nigga that would make a hard day in verses would be French Montana. I would go French versus uh Future. Future. I would I would watch that. No, I would I would stand down on my initial statement. I would watch that. Well, versus is about to go public for like a IPO, like a five billion dollar um So it's not going nowhere. It's not going nowhere. And other investors like they clearly see something that I didn't know this was going how it is now. They're gonna so, take they're gonna take verses on the road once the once the world open back up. It'll be a versus tour. Yeah, I'm I go to a couple. Well, I would want to go to a couple. I don't know if I'm physically gonna be in the building. Yeah. Uh but I would want to go to to some of these verses. I just was looking on Twitter the other day. It's a little just a, a different subject, but Benny the Butcher is talking about circling back to Detroit. That he owed the city a show. I also got an uh, email from Ticketmaster saying it's been it's indefinitely. Well, they don't know when it's going to be. So I hope he is. I hope he circled back. Yeah, because <laughs> he was like, yo, we're not really sure yet. Yeah, <laughs> it was the I email I got this week. Uh, so let me see if I can still if I, I'll find the lead or not. Uh, Ticketmaster. We'll let you know, though. Right. Oh, yeah. Benny the Butcher has been postponed. The event organizer is still trying to reschedule your event. If they do, your tickets will remain good at the rescheduled date. Thanks. Yeah, thanks. It's been a long time. And the Butcher just signed with Def Jam. Yeah, I heard. I saw. Uh, I wonder why. I don't know. But maybe he knows and sees something that we don't. Yeah. And, you know, I'd be honest, man. The independent grind is not easy sometimes nigga don't want to do all that no i want to no you give me the money up front and you can hire a team and do all the other shit yeah i just don't i don't want the independent ground no more nor you talk about that shit all the time like look i, I know how the independent route is and all the money i'm a big i'm a big label nigga. <laughs> <laughs> i want to i want a fucking a team be like when i say do that Go handle that shit. Yeah. I want to. I don't, don't, don't wanna... Not everybody wants to do it all themselves. If it's like being doing... an entrepreneur. This shit ain't for everybody. It ain't. And there's nothing wrong with saying that. Like, people talk down on people who not, oh, nigga, you got a job. Yeah, nigga, because that shit's safe as fuck for me. I just want to be able to go to work and get a check. Like, I don't want to be the nigga. <laughs> Look, when we couldn't have nobody in the building for three months, everything all right? Yeah, I was just checked the Royal Rumble. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't want. Yeah, I seen that picture too. I don't want to be the nigga, you know, that that's trying to figure out how we gonna take care of the rent for three months. And that's your foot. My bad. I ain't got my shoes on. Uh, and you know, we still got to make rent, and niggas can't come in this bitch for three months. Yeah, because shit like that can be stressful. It's a little TikTok reel going around like. I quit my nine. I, I want. I wanted to get away from my nine to five and such and such such such. Now I work twenty four hours a day. <laughs> right. <laughs> Nigga, that's how it be. Uh. So, um, man, what's some music you enjoyed this year? Ross album. Uh, a lot of people didn't. I don't see. Maybe I think because of the name, people were expecting lo- those big records, those luxurious rap records, and th- they weren't on the album. But like he rapping his ass off. I enjoy. I re- maybe I was ready for this album because I had just read the book uh, or the audio book. But okay, I had just read the book. You know, I've been. You know, if it wasn't for COVID nineteen, this album would have came out already. I seen some people say it felt rushed. I'm like, eh, 
he been working on this shit for quite some time. It just it didn't meet. I don't know what people was expecting. I don't know. Payroll had a good album. I really enjoyed Payroll's album. Uh, Big Sean, Detroit too. Yeah, I like that. He say about to release Detroit on streaming services. I wouldn't be mad at that at all. Boldy James gave us a lot of music this year. A lot of fucking. Right. I'll be honest, dog. I'm thoroughly surprised at Nas. Oh my god! Like Nas gave us three incredible projects in one year. About a year and a half, um, but two this year for sure. Yeah. Um, but like, y'all. I mean, it's clear that I'm a I'm a Nas fan, right? Right. But that don't mean I I I'm just in love with every single project he make because that's just not the case. Uh, but King Disease Two and Magic were tough. Yo, this magic project, yo, this nigga is rapping, rapping. 4016. He rapping and the production is great, but like he just don't seem like he got a care in the world. I'm not trying to be nobody. I'm not trying to. Um, I'm like, I'm just, I'm just out here having fun. I, I'm just enjoying making music again. I found a good producer who's crafting me a perfect sound. And we just enjoy making music. Man, this is high level. This is high skill level rapping into in a, at an age where most when you get towards the twilight of your career, Nas is forty eight. Like it don't it don't it don't supposed to be like this. <laughs> Nas is forty eight, and you can arguably say he's crafting some of the best work of his career. I'm for real though, like for real, for real. At approaching fifty, Nas is still giving niggas that work. I just want like yo man. I'm impressed, you know, man, by the by the frequency. Nas used to drop every two years. Yeah. And then it became even less frequent. To give us three albums in a year and a half, two of them have already been nominated for Grammys. What if Nas fuck around and pull a Grammy a, for King's Disease 2? It would be well-deserved. Then he got one for King's Disease 1? Yeah. And he said KD3 on the way. I want to hear it. Tyler the Creator gave like Tyler the Creator gave a really good rap album. You know, I could never get into it. Okay. Um, I don't think I finished I didn't I didn't fully finish it. Um, and I didn't get in, I didn't when I say I never got into it, not because I didn't think it was good. I don't know, I think I don't know. I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna take it a, give it another listen through this week. Was, Everybody said how great it was. It's really good, Jay. I think the expectations Kind of, you know, he got it's some weird, it's some weird beats on there and shit. But everybody like, no, he rapping, rapping. So because he is. So Tyler can rap. He, I, I always thought he can freestyle, and you know, he's a funny nigga. So yeah, he can fucking rap. You know what? Even though I'm not the biggest fan of her music, I thought Beyonce would drop something. Yeah, she she kind of be even quiet. She has been. I thought Beyonce would give y'all something. What's the last project Beyonce put out? Lemonade? Uh, or did she drop a surprise album since then? Nah. Black is King. Wasn't that an album? Was it? I'm not that well versed in Beyonce to but I'm pulling it up. I guess oh, that it's was Lion a King album. Yeah, yeah. But her last solo joint was Lemonade, twenty sixteen. Five years. She pulling a Kendrick on niggas. Because that's she, the last time Kendrick dropped. But she having babies, too. Man, them babies big as hell. Look, Yo, man. somebody said something to me. And I can't unsee it. Okay. What is it? I don't know if I should say it out loud because I don't want to put the pressure on them niggas. But they did say they ain't never seen uh, Jay-Z and Beyonce kids or twins without both of them holding them. Nah, I can't unsee it. Every time I see a picture, both of them, either one, they are ho always holding them. They're never like standing by themselves. I'm like, hmm, that's interesting. Like something wrong with the kids? That's how the that's how the question was posed, but not like in like a uh, a mocking or like a disrespectful manner. They just asked the question, and I was like, I don't know. Then never I started, thought of it. And then I started googling pictures. I'm like, ew. But like. I don't, I don't want. I don't want. I don't want that to be a thing, and I don't want that to be associated with this pie. <laughs> but um, 
I, I shouldn't even say that shit. It's out there now. Uh, it's out there. Uh, it's up there, Steve. You know, you say something. Yeah. <laughs> it's up there, Steve. It's up there, Steve. Uh, yo, man, I just think the the greats. I was waiting for Kendrick. I thought the greats. Um, the greats have been blessing us. I mean, Nas and Jay did a, a wonderful motherfucking uh, track this year. Yeah, they did. Like that's what. It might be one of my favorite, if not the favorite, Jay and and Nas song. Okay. Um, I put a matter of fact, I got a, a playlist I put together. I gave you my order actually. Um, and this playlist is called The Gods. It goes this, and this is the order. I got a list, and this is how the how the Eminem said. I got a list. Here's the order of my list, and it's in. It goes. Uh, <laughs> sorry, not sorry. Success. Black Republicans, BBC, I Do It For Hip Hop, a ludicrous record. I remember. And then Bath Salts. Low-key, Jay and Nas gave us two this year, but this Bath Salts record is old as hell. It is. Um, this Bath Salt record, hot take time. This Bath Salt record started Versus. We heard this Bath Salt record on the first Versus. The first Versus was, was Swiss, Swiss and... um. Uh, just blaze just blaze on on some dj shit and they was playing records back and forth and and, and swiss dropped that and the internet went fucking crazy yeah and this was before covid before everything and they was doing a little versus thing and then they kind of they, they they mistakenly said or maybe they do it for a promo that swiss and tim started versus when they did that online but versus started before that uh now this format of versus they was just playing beats Fuck that! They started it. However you, however you, however you want to slice it. There's video out there, and um, it was a record, and it had Jay Z, Nas, and then and it had Jada Kiss on that bitch too. I remember that. Yeah, and uh, that's how Swiss uh, won. And like uh, we talked about how how much did we talk about the Jay Z um, versus last week? We talked about it. Okay. That he said couldn't nobody stand on on the stage with him. And we said maybe Kanye. I say Kanye can stand on the stage with him. Um, I think Snoop can stand on the stage with him. And I think Nas can stand on the stage with him. Um, and D Rick hit me up. He had posted something. I, I, uh, I think that was like on Christmas Eve. And uh, we was on, on Instagram back and forth. This nigga called me and we had like a whole hour, <laughs> a whole hour discussion, uh, a lively discussion. And um, I just be thinking that sometimes we overthink this shit because there's 20 records. At the end of the day, it's 20 fucking records, right? Right. It's not a whose 30 year catalog is better than your 30 year catalog or whatever, or insert this. But like once rappers or musicians, artists, have a 30 year catalog. Snoop got 30 years of music. He got 20. Fuck yeah, he did. You know what I'm saying? Like he got 20 that people love. Now he already did one with DMX. We know that. You gonna tell me that Nas don't got 20? Nas got die hard fucking fans just as Jay Z got die hard fans. I would have and a 30 year catalog. A 30 year catalog with single records I did by myself plus features and everything. He got 20, my nigga. You know what I'm saying? Kanye clearly has 20. Um, but the and the better person don't always the quote unquote better person don't always win. So you think Swiss Beats the greatest producer of all time? No. You put that nigga on the stage with a versus, he got the records that could beat a, in a versus. Cause this one song in this round that I'm playing against this one song in this round. Yo, Swiss got the records that be like, yeah, like that. Yeah. No, but do I think he's the best producer? I don't think that Lil Wayne is on Jay Z's level at all. But does Lil Wayne have twenty records? Absolutely. That a mass of people will fuck with. Yes. I mean Wayne catalog twenty years deep, and we taking it back to like Hot Boys. The block is hot. Like Wayne been doing it a long time, and he had hits back then. He, he, I started playing hot boy. Like, so it's like we grew up together with Lil Wayne. Right. Right. So 
we was already Same age. 98. We already 16, 17 years old. That's a different when that he when he he's still Little Wayne. We're not looking up to Little Wayne because he his your yo, yo shit say little, right? Yeah. But like if you was younger than us growing up, when Little Wayne hit his peak, he was older than you and he was the hottest thing smoking. So your formative years are being formed while Little Wayne is them Carter years on, probably on on fire. Carter one through three. So those records are going to hit that demographic different than Jay Z records. Right. The Jay Z record going to demonstrate what going to resonate with me off top. You know what I'm saying? But like, we ain't the majority. No. Nah. So like, I get what people be saying. Oh, y'all can't fuck with my nigga. I had my little uh, my nephews, and my little cousins, shit over Christmas. They don't look at that shit the same. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? My nephew, me, my my uh, my little cousin, he's 20 years old. He's an adult now. He got his own musical taste. He thinks fucking uh, what's the nigga? The Barter Six nigga. Uh, Slim Thug. Slim uh, yeah, Slim th- not Slim Young Thug. Thug. Young, Young Thug. Thug. He think that nigga is like fucking amazing. And a lot of people do, right? But. He if he if a, a, a if a Young Thug song came on in the verses and a Jay Z came on in the verses, I hundred percent know which one he picking. I just do, and it's a lot of these people out here, and like we can't only act like we talking to similar minds. Yeah, when you yeah. get on that fucking stage, it's a million niggas on Twitter. I mean, it's a million niggas on Instagram. It's a, and they in them comments, yo. The other 40, 35 to 40 year olds, niggas ain't, <laughs> don't, don't even know how to work their Twitter. Yeah. So the idea of yo niggas can't stand on stage with me, man, that's a limited idea that can get you smoked on stage. Cause if you go in thinking that your shit is better than everybody's, though I understand why you would think that, fam, you can get smoked on stage. Thinking that this classic record is gonna when niggas graduated they, to a milli, a milli, a milli, and you put on some classic shit we fuck with. They put on what we do. We already know we going with what we do. Right. But you put on something that the, the generation run. They, Let the beat build. Like, how do you tell? Like, the the, the people say, the people just decide who won, right? Yeah, they do. That's the formula. If you think that your shit don't stink, you're going to get smoked on that stage. You got You're fucking embarrassed. Ran out the building. You're going to get smoked and your shit may not be fast tempo enough. My cousin, my little cousin told me that Tupac rap too slow. My daughter be like, what's this old rap music you listening to? Yo, shout out to this DJ that got found on um, on Instagram. And uh, he do samples, songs. That I know you're talking samples, about. Samples, uh, songs that you didn't know were samples. And he also do um, old school rappers on current beats. Right. And he do current rappers on old school beats. When he throw the the Tupac, the throw the uh, B.I.G. over shit like that, I'm like, look, this shit sound good. And then he threw some of the, he threw um, uh, uh, Young Miami verse over like some classic hip hop shit and the shit fit. I'm like, yo, if she would have rapped this shit during that time frame, you would have gave her fucking respect. But like when we hear something that is not our sound initially, we form an opinion like, no, that's not good. But when you switch, let me put the focus on something else. Oh. Put on an old school little Kim beat. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's what she did. I think that's what he did. That would make sense. Yeah. I but love, uh, I love Carisha. Yeah, man. Um, I don't know. I just want to say that I, I, I do think there's people that can stand on the stage with, with, with Jay. Specifically, the only person that he would, I personally think he would ever get on the stage with is uh, Snoop, but he already did one. Uh, Kanye or Nas, because this is just me and my personal. Put him up there with Dre. Who? Let Dre and Jay Z do a versus. He, Dre, he can't do one with Dre. Nigga, I wrote the Steel Dre song. <laughs> How you gonna, you gonna play that against me? I wrote the song. Like I wrote you and Snoop verse. <laughs> like yeah. Um. So like, I don't think Jay Z will put. Like a and people say Drake, right? I don't think that at all. But people say Drake because he got hits and everything like that. Drake doesn't deserve it. Jay Z will never put Drake on the same level as him. Like, cause if I do a verse with you, that's like I'm acknowledging yeah. that we on the same level, and we not, and we not. 
Um, I don't think he would have a problem with Snoop being on the stage because Snoop been out. There's a certain level of respect. Yeah. Like, nigga, I came out first. You know what I'm saying? I've been out since, what, 92 um, or whatever. Like, Nas, uh, there's well-documented history between us. Like, we connected forever, no matter what. Yeah. So it's not, you're not putting me on the, nigga, we are intertwined. Our names go together Forever. like Pac and Big, Jay and Nas. Biggie, Jay-Z and Nas. What did Nas say in on that one song? Uh, Who's the best, Pac, Nas, or Big? He ain't put Jay in it. No, nah, no. Nah. It was another, it was on the Magic album. Oh. Like Kenny Cole and Drizzy. Yeah. And he compared himself, Jay, and I can't Him, think. Jay, and Biggie. Yeah, yeah. To Kenny Cole and Drizzy. Yeah. Forever will you all be you link. So those are three people I can see doing verses with. Um he may or may not do one with Kanye because he still think Kanye little brother, but Kanye's a big enough name to y'all can do a versus. Cause I mean y'all got a whole fucking album together though. So you know what I'm enjoying about Kanye right now in his attempt to get his wife back <sighs> uh, is buying the house allegedly across the street. <laughs> Some wild shit. <laughs> That's some wild shit, man. They said that nigga. Was it real that he was like caught in the bushes or some shit? Look, man, I done been there before. Was that a real story, though? I don't know. But all I'm just saying is that there was a point in time where I had on white underwear, <laughs> draws, <laughs> and it was snow outside. And I am on my parents, I'm on my in law's porch in nothing but white underwear. In the snow, banging on the door because I want my wife to come outside and talk to me. I can't say I have that. been there. Look, I can't say this. And I understand that. I drove over there barefoot and in draws. I, I can only imagine what people be going through when they're going through um, a possible divorce and things of that nature. I can tell you, getting the rest of the family involved never works out for you. It doesn't. Uh, it don't work out for you. It don't tell your sister to call me. It don't do what you think it's doing, because guess what? The family siding with that motherfucker no matter what. It make you look crazy, that motherfucker. And it's like, like yo, you doing too much. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, and I'm not talking about you. No, no, but I mean, nigga, I I lived it. I lived it. I literally to to seeing her sisters. Tell your sister I said call me. Telling my kids. Asking my kids shit. What your mama been doing? Who she going out with? Like, nigga, the, the shit gets obsessive. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's weird. And I, and, and, I, it's, and it only makes you a villain in the story. Yeah. And I can I can appreciate where it comes from because you know, this is hurt, pain, and frustration coming out. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm trying to get, I want to work on this shit now. I don't want to wait. <laughs> right. I want to work on this shit now because internally I'm all upside. I'm twisted every day. I want, I want a I'm piece changing. of mind. I'm changing. Like you want that shit settled now. And I can promise you that what you doing is not accomplishing the goal that you think you're doing. Cause what you're doing is now they can't take you back because you did acted a fool in front of the entire family. And now I'm going to look with, now they may look at me differently. Now, granted, family, I'm always going to roll with family no matter what. If you want to take a nigga back, take a nigga back. I don't give a fuck. In rare occasions, it does happen. But when I'm like, nigga, you don't real. I didn't realize how crazy I was looking until like years later. What's interesting like how is, crazy I was acting. And which is like, so, you know, like, so when there's an outsider who gets married into a family, right? It's always love from the family and you've always received love. But you do know there's a other side to that shit too, though, right? Like they we love you because such and such loves you. Yeah. And when y'all at odds, like that love, we talk about this shit all the time. You know, it's varying degrees of the same emotion. Yo, know, that love and, and affection that we give you can easily turn to hate and and pain. And like you like it's a certain line you don't you don't want to cross because once you cross it y'all can be cool right but that shit ain't gonna never be the same between us yeah you know what i'm saying 
Like I remember I had a, a in a in a past relationship, um, my ex and her brother would get into it all the time. You know what I'm saying? And I would always stay out of it because y'all gonna be cool if me and your brother get into it. It ain't it's no gonna change the dynamic. It ain't no coming back. And yo, know, one time they got they 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 got into it or some shit. He was he he he, he like mumbled under his breath to me like suck ass nigga, and I was like. Did you, you know address what? it? Yeah, I was like, you know what? I'm a, I'm a, I'm a leave because we was leaving out the house. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, I'm gonna go ahead and leave because this could go somewhere that your brother, who lives at home with his mom, cannot handle. <laughs> okay, right. And like, we can't take it there because this is also the house that your mother lives in. You know what I'm saying? Like, so it's gonna be best for me to, 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 to not respond I'll be a to that. Ass nigga tonight. Yeah, but like in my like in my mind at that particular moment, nigga, I whoop your motherfucking ass, nigga. What I like every single time that y'all, I'm looking at you like, nigga, I will, cause and you don't never want to get to the point like, man, I will, I will literally beat this shit out you, nigga. But like you know, that just how like I, <laughs> nigga, when I'm banging on my in laws' door at two three in the morning in my drawers, and all my father in law can do is tell me through the door. Damon, go home. Damon, go home. You know what's so interesting? Because shout out to your father-in-law. My my in-laws are incredible people. Because if they weren't, like, like they still welcome me into their home. Like, niggas, not nothing funny. They they look for me on holidays. Still call me on my birthday. Like, they, her family is, inc- is a family. They're yeah. incredible people. And even though all the wrong that I've done, they found something to forgive me in their hearts and still... Embrace me to this day. What's the young, uh, relatively, um, cornerback from Seattle and San Francisco? Richard Sherman. Richard that was, Sherman. That was going crazy. Yeah, this year. That yeah. was happening like beginning of this year. Had a, a, a similar situation. and um, He was trying to break the door in. And, but the stepfather, well, the, the father-in-law showed that same type of grace because he was armed. And that situation could have happened differently. And even through the 911 tapes and everything, you heard, like, yo, Richard, go home. Uh, we'll handle this later. We'll talk about this tomorrow. Like, go home. And that was my father-in-law's whole stance. Just like, clearly you're not in your you're not in your right frame of mind, son, because you were on my porch in the condition that you were in. And I had to— Just go home and get some sleep. I, um, I alluded to the earlier today um, when my father was giving some instruction and, and some explanation. I had to call my father today, like, listen— don't respond no more. You know what I'm saying? Because like, if you continue to respond, even though you're making a hundred percent sense, like somebody going to say something that they can't take back and they're going to have a different problem on their hand. Right. So just, just don't respond. You know what I'm saying? Because it takes that grace to give somebody like, look, they, they emotional. Um, they're not speaking from a place of confidence at all. Like, let them do their thing because you you only you got as many second chances with your mate as possible. You don't got no second chances with me. I'm not a second chance giver <laughs> like I that. I don't love you. <laughs> like I don't have a child with you. Like it <laughs> this sounds worse than what I mean, but in most circumstances, I can just never talk to you for forever again and I'll be perfectly fine. Like I never see you again in my fucking life. Oh fucking well, you know what I'm saying? Like you, you not that. And life will continue. Like so, it you only got so far that you can go, and it's like, look, nigga, I don't, I don't give a fuck about second chances. And like, so relax. <laughs> well, that's one of the things I I am enjoying about this year is Kanye trying to get his wife back. I've been oh. there before, yay. Yeah, but I've been there before. I don't think Kanye. I don't. I think what he think he's doing, and what's actually being done is two different things. No, it's it's probably very unhealthy. And him from, living across the street, the kids probably not seeing him in the best frame of mind. I saw something that Kim allegedly said. I don't know, um, but say so, yo, Kanye is a one, one hundred percent great on big grand romantic gestures but it's the little shit that i need 
it's always a little shit that that I want. Right, it's the day to day shit, right? Mm -hmm. So you respond by doing more, bigger, grander gestures. You good with that? You a superstar? You hold nine yards, but the regular shit, you not there for. So you responded with bigger, grand, like that don't help, my nigga. Yeah. I get it. It That's always it always be the little things that women need. It always be the little things. In your language, that in the way that you communicate, this is how you express love, right? So I understand it completely. Look, I am pouring out my life, my my love, and everything like that. What the other person needs could be something different, and. That's the internal conflict. Like, I'm telling you, I love you. See, I love you. Yeah, they may not see it the way you see it. They don't both ain't both y'all are t- telling the truth. You do love her in the way that you love her. I said it a few weeks. You can't love someone into loving you. You you can shower them with every feeling of emotion and love that you can muster, but it does not mean that they're gonna love you back. You can't debate nobody into a relationship. I, you made a great point. I guess we're going to be together. Nope. That's not how it work. <laughs> that's not how it work. Listen, man, I've been in situations where like, you know, people have stated their cases on like why we should be together. And it's just because like, I don't want to like, I, all that list. That's great. But I don't, I don't want to. I mean, at the end of the day, that's what, that's, that's what matters. Right. I don't want to. And th- these might be the selling points that that will make some other nigga flip upside down, but I, I don't I don't want to. And I and I get how good of a person you are, how good you look, how good and amazing your sex is, but I don't. You're not my forever. And that and that's that's just what it is. You can't you can't sell me on something that I know is, like is not for me. What did Ti say? Um... Is it ain't that you don't deserve it? Is I don't want to give it the life you want to live. Surely I don't want to live it. it. I'm not your man. I can't be your, your man. man. Yeah. <laughs> I mean that's a bar in itself, and it's some real deeper shit. Like yo, you deserve everything. Everything that you want in a relationship that you want to be reciprocated from, you deserve that. I don't want to give it. Because what you want is not what I want. Or the things that you want, I don't want with you. And that's what's so crazy. Oh, is, that's, that sounds so much more hurtful. It do. But like the things that you want, I want those too. But I want those with the person in my mind. Just how you want those from me, I want those from another person. And as long as I want that from another person, it's not going to be fair. It ain't it'll fair be, to It'll be fake. It'll be contrived. Yeah, we can be in this relationship. Oh, man, this is probably real bad to say, but whatever, we here. Uh, you know, I've seen, I was dating this young lady, and, you know, it could have been something amazing. Yeah. But she knew, she knew <laughs> that, like, there was somebody from my past that, like, if the opportunity opened up to, I'd always probably wonder, like, what could have been. 100%. And she was like, that was just too much for her to to deal with. I think that's a difference between men and women. I think women have the more. The wherewithal. Wherewithal just to say, nope, not doing it. I'm a stake right here. And that's something that'd be commendable, right? Because I don't always got that. You know what I'm saying? It's a different level of emotional self-control. Yeah. That's emotional self-control at its finest. Mm-hmm. And we just two different creatures, right? Like, I think I think a lot of times that when relationships don't work out or marriages don't work out, I'm like, yo, why the fuck would you leave this 30-year marriage to go trick off with some such and such and such? A, well, I've been wanting this girl since high school. I never let it go. They was talking about, I saw something on the news last night talking about the gray age, like the baby boomers. Mm. Those are the highest level of divorce. They done raised the kids, the grandkids, mm. and now it's just us. I'm like, I don't really like now you no more. Now it's time for my happiness. Yeah, I don't want to be with you. I've completed my duty as a man and as a father, even a grandfather. So now that the duty is over, I want happiness. I wish we would have had the happiness together. 
Sometimes it happens. Sometimes it don't. And that and that'd be like the shit that you're saying. I've been wanting Pauline since high school. Her old man just died two years ago. Yo, what was that? B and Mary Jane. I know y'all, the women, used to watch B and Mary Jane. Like, her mama cheated on old dude, like, from years back. And her husband was like, he had to take that. <laughs> like, from years and years back. But you can't tell somebody, like, what they heart wants for them. And I give you credit for this shit. I was explaining this shit to somebody the other day. My nigga, he don't own nobody. You don't. Like they they can always do whatever they want to do whenever they want to. That mixed with the four agreements and it's not about it's always about them and not about you. Like that shit didn't it it didn't damn near put me in a situation like yo, I can't even be upset when shit don't work out. If somebody does something I don't didn't intend to do because shit I don't own you <laughs> and it's not about me it's about you you wanted something different I don't mean I'm deficient in any particular way you literally wanted what you wanted or if I choose something different I don't got nothing to do with you don't feel bad I wanted something different or whatever so yeah man I'll leave that shit in 2020, yeah. 2021 shit too shit let that man go. Let that woman go. Because a bird going to fly. And it may not be in your direction. But a bird going to fly. I can't be. It's like, <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, yo, shout out to Rob Silver, man. Yeah, yeah, man. Rob put together a, a playlist for This Week in Culture from every song that we played on the pod this year. Which was an amazing playlist. Shout out uh, to Rob. It's like four hours worth, of, four and a half hours worth of content and shit, man. Shout out to Rob. I said I'm going um, to go back and put all of the 2021 music picks um, on a playlist and um, and publish that as well because I think that need, you know what I'm saying, they need to get some, some love and shine. You know, we put a lot of hard work in those picks. And um, to get those together in a, in one single place, man, that will be dope as well. So I'm going to work on doing that, man. And uh, and going forward, I mean, I'm, I might do 2020. You know what I'm saying? The whole nine yards, however long we've been doing that shit. And, um, I mean, that, I think that's a thing, though. Niggas should be trying to get on, like, how they got rap caviar and all that shit. Oh, it is about to be a thing. The Shop Talk music pick. The, yeah. The music pick of the year. I got a different. I got a different spin and an idea for it next year. Okay, but I'm gonna hold on to that right now. All right. Uh, what about this week's uh, music pick? We do have a music pick this week. It's uh, from an artist. Did I send it to you already? Yeah, you did. Okay. Yeah, we. My music pick of the week is from an artist by the name of Uncle Smooth and Dom Julio. Shout out to Uncle Smooth. We seen him on. Uh, What's, what's the name of Gene's podcast? Uh, oh, shit. Oh, this is a music pick, so. Seven, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Happy New Year. All I saw, all I saw, all I saw was smoke. Man, this shit here too loud. Well, I can't turn it down. They try to run off with the way. I bet them bitches drown. I think I'm ready for the crown. What better time than now? All I smell is smoke. All I see is cloud. Man, this shit here too loud. Well, I can't turn it down. They try to run off with the way. I bet them bitches drown. I think I'm ready for the crown. What better time than now? Shit, I'm just chillin' with my feet up, rollin' weed up, stayin' G'd up If we was on his hand, John Cena couldn't see us All day I dream about smoke, I ain't talkin' about Adidas, no We don't do no Reggies or smoke on no Sativa Only cookie and that shit hitting harder than Sharkeisha Cheech and Chong wouldn't wanna spark either Ain't poppin' no pills, drinkin' lean or snortin' Tina's If you fuckin' with that, then I ain't fuckin' with you either All I do is roll up reefer, that shit put me in a sleeper If I put you down with two, I'ma so Gene, the name of Gene's podcast highly is Highly Sober. Sober. So shout out to the homie Eugene. He had us on a few weeks ago. 
I don't know if he's dropped an episode yet. Not yet. Highly Sober TV. Again, the name of this song is Smoking Clouds by Uncle Smooth and Dom Julio. Uh, we ran into Uncle Smooth during the recording of Highly Sober TV. And uh, I like it. It's just it's just got a that smoker's groove to it, baby. You know, I mean, tonight is a special occasion. You know, you getting high tonight. We only go into the new year once a year. <laughs> I mean, shout out to uh, somebody who supplied me with some. That's what's some, up. Some some you know. Jason doing drugs tonight. We, we may we may you know what I'm saying it's a special occasion. A you bump will me? make you jump. No, I ain't doing no a little coke. <laughs> a little coke in the building. You know what I'm saying. Coke so, boys. It is what it is. You know what I mean. We see what I'm sure. Okay. Sure, sure. <laughs> put a little fin in it. Uh, listen. You man. want a dent in it? Put in some fin in it. Hey, <laughs> I just realized what you were saying. <laughs> a little bit. That's funny. It's not, but that's funny. <laughs> yeah, man. Whose man's is this? Uh, yeah, I put this shit in the in the in the thread a while ago. But I was at the crib and I was watching Judge Mathis, and I saw the whole episode. Dog. Yo, <laughs> Judge Mathis a wild boy. <laughs> Judge Mathis be wildy. Yo, this thing. The lady came on. And she was basically saying that she was suing uh, this guy who ran into her car. And she was like, everybody in the neighborhood call him the neighborhood crackhead. And she like unveiled it like that. And he was like, oh, come on now, lady. Now you can't be calling him a crackhead. And then he was like, she ain't got no proof. He was like, ah. That's not really a response. <laughs> he was like, ah. So I don't know if y'all saw the little clip, but he rolled up the little piece of paper of the A <laughs> and he put it on the, on the, on the. Uh, Let on me the, see if your arm starts yeah, jumping. Yeah, his arm moved like, ah. So this nigga was going in on him like, dog, like, whose man is this, dog? Like, I fuck with you, Judge Mathis. The whole, the whole, everything. From the city, Judge the whole Mathis night. probably think he can still kick your ass. Uh, Judge Mathis is an old ass man. He probably think he can, you know. Now, he can jab you to death. Judge Mathis is HGK, okay? Mm. <laughs> Y'all niggas don't know what HGK is. You feel me? But uh, if you was from the Herman Gardens, you know what the HGK is. Goddamn yeah, right. Uh, yo, the Gardens was crazy, dog. I couldn't imagine growing up like when it was popping. Nigga, we was... Yeah, my mom used to want to live in the Gardens. See, when she was younger, they was, uh, they was like teal. They weren't that brown. <laughs> they, they, probably, like the, they probably looked nice when they was first. They probably look like what looks what's over there now. Yeah. Cause like say twenty years from now they I mean, nigga, i look, I applied for low income housing in eleventh grade mm -hmm. because I knew the list was about three years. So I said by the time I get out of high school and get me a job, I'll be able to move into one of these joints. Nigga, I, I applied for the nigga, it was the king homes were new. Mm. And I was like, I want to live here off Jefferson in low income housing, my niggas. Yeah. I so I understand, I understand the theory behind the shit. You know, low income housing is a trap. How, How so? It's for us. That's what it's for. <laughs> like, it's, and then you put all, put us, put us all together. Oh, near the freeway. Yeah. So, so they can, the every key. now and then. I wonder if this gate was put up to keep crime out or keep my ass in. So listen, I can't end the year without one of them them things that I be doing. So look, all my niggas, you know what I realized is, and I appreciate it. So don't take this like no other way. Niggas think that I'm their mouthpiece for all conspiracies. And I'm a conspiracy nigga, but I get, I get them sent to me Every day. Okay. I'm not even bullshitting. Every single day, somebody sends me or tags me or something because they want me to be the mouthpiece to get this shit out. It's a lot more conspiracy niggas out there than y'all know. They just want me to tell it. Oh, I, I, I know somebody that's like on some wild shit with conspiracy. We've already had him on the show. He didn't speak the first time he was on the show, but we've already had him here and he want to come back. He didn't speak? Okay. But he want to come back. We spent some time together recently. Oh, okay. And my nigga, when I say he was diving into shit I had never heard of before. Oh, we got to chop it up. Yeah. I told him, I said, no, man. I said, next year, we're going to have you on. Yeah. So, like, um, let me cue up this music and shit. But listen, um, you know, this year, uh, I mean, we kind of like in our groove with our, with our pod and everything. 
we did a whole bunch of um we did a whole bunch of like uh guests this year yeah. towards the end of the year and shit so i mean we'll we'll have guests and everything like that but um uh, we only still fucking with people that we really want to have conversations with. Yeah. You could be a musical artist and everything like that. We'll probably get into that shit, but we really wanted to just come up here and chick, kick it as if insert rapper, singer, whatever, walk into the barbershop. We not going to sit the whole time and t- ask, I tell your you life story. I don't need you to dissect your music. Yeah. Uh, but if it's questions that we want to ask, we we'll ask that because AKA, I don't want to do, I don't want to be on nobody interview tour. So to speak, we yeah. just really want to fuck with niggas who we fuck with. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and you may not be no entertainer, no rapper, no shit like that. We just have regular niggas on here, and uh, I do want to. I'm really to chop it up with some conspiracies with a lot of people. You know yeah, what I'm saying? yeah. But people act like I'm the the mouthpiece for conspiracy. I appreciate it. You know what I'm saying? Um, I just want to say that it's a lot more of of us uh, than it is of y'all, and y'all just don't know it. You'd be surprised. Um, but I said all that to say this I gotta leave you with the King Alfred plan Rex 84 King Alfred plan R-E-X 84 so what Dane was just talking about like right by the freeway and everything like that look into that look into that and then holler at me tell me what you thought alright it's your man Dame three underscores three one three at me on IG on Twitter you talk to me I will talk back Listen, man, I just want to appreciate everybody that's been listening to us. Everybody that's been rocking with us for 295 episodes. It's a labor of love. Listening to these episodes, it's a labor of love. And we appreciate y'all fully. One fan a day, one listen a day. I'm happy for it. When you see the blue and the black, you know where the fuck you at. It is Shop Talk Podcast. See you next year. Uh... Man, 295 episodes, man. We appreciate you, dog. We really do appreciate y'all for listening, tapping in with us, sharing, interacting with us the whole nine yards. I promise I'm going to be more active on the Shop Talk Instagram page and the Shop Talk Twitter page. I'm trying to take a little break for my personal social media. Uh, I'll probably be on there and not posting as much, but I want to focus on the business. You feel me? So... Um, all that shit. Uh, hey man, when you see the blue and the black, you know where you at. Shop Talk Podcast Studio. Book some time. I'm not saying we the Rockefeller Podcast, but we are Jane Day. Hell yeah. Peace.